Live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE. Covering Citrix Synergy Atlanta 2019. Brought to you by Citrix. Welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend, day two of theCUBE's coverage of Citrix Synergy 2019. We're in Atlanta, Georgia, welcoming back one of our CUBE alumni, Lee Doyle, Principal Analyst at Doyle Research. Lee, it's great to have you back on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So we were chatting away all day yesterday with Citrix execs and analysts. We talked to one of their customers from the Miami Marlins. Excited about day two today. We've talked a lot about some of the, the key tenants that Citrix addressed yesterday. Digital workspace, the intelligent experience, analytics, security. We want to talk about networking with you. I was looking at a stat the other day that said over 80% of businesses believe the ability to migrate apps to the cloud is hindered by network infrastructure right. complexity. Talk to us about that and what Citrix is doing to help reduce that complexity. Sure, so we now have an environment where uh, data is everywhere, employees are everywhere, partners are everywhere, data is flowing, um, you're going to be using in-house applications, you're using SaaS-based applications, you're using applications on AWS or Azure or Google, and there's no good control of that information, but there also isn't a good way necessarily to deliver the appropriate quality of user experience or quality of service that those applications need. So the network, that's where the network sits. It's handling all the traffic, it sees the, the traffic, it can help with security. So that's why the network becomes so important here. So Lee, the SD-WAN has come so far, I remember uh, back when I managed networks and trying to come up with policy-based routing to send voice traffic one <laughs> way and you know, FTP <coughs> traffic another way and now uh, we have a robust market. I thought the market would collapse. It was 20 plus, uh, last time I looked, 20 plus significant SD-WAN solutions right. out on the market. Where is Citrix and the customer mindsets when it comes to SD-WAN? Right, so I'll start with SD-WAN and the, the broad picture, which is, you know, SD-WAN is a great technology at the right place at the right time. It's the example of SDN broadly that's had very good adoption. And it solves a, a real problem, which is that you need to uh, link the user and the application with each other. Right. And that application can be in a variety of places, so you're not no longer just simply going from the branch via MPLS to the data center. Great, now you're going to Amazon, now you're going to Salesforce, now you're, now you're going to Microsoft. And the idea of having a hybrid WAN with internet connections, MPLS, uh, 4G LTE, cable, like whatever you want. So SD-WAN technology sits at that nexus and uh, providing the intelligence and the management and the ease of use to enable uh, re the remote workforce and the remote branches. So, Keith on a really uh, interesting combination, identity. Citrix is really into identity management. SD-WAN, what's possible? Talk to us about the what's possible when you can tie identity to your network. Right, yeah, so Citrix is a um, solid SD-WAN supplier. They're able to identify the traffic. They're, they have partnerships with all the major um, cloud guys. Um, and one of the critical aspects of SD-WAN is how do you tie in the security aspects. So you have network security and partnerships maybe with a Palo Alto or Zscale or some other folks, but then you also have the identity because there is no fixed perimeter anymore, right? Right, there so is the no bad, more four walls. The bad guys can get access at, at any different point, so authentication and understanding you know, the identity is a critical aspect, and uh, Citrix has some excellent partnerships and programs to help that out. Especially, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Especially when you think of like Office 365 and these services where, you know, when I think of Office 365, I think about my consumer version of Office 365. I can share data with anyone right. in the organization. Uh, I can access it from anywhere in the world. Right before we started recording, you know, we talked a little bit about the ability of Citrix with this partnership with uh, Microsoft and Office 365 to improve access to Office, Office 365. When we think about that from a consumer perspective, that kind of, you know, it doesn't, it, it kind of doesn't register, wait, I need to 
when I use Office 365, it just works. Right. Like, what are some of the challenges enterprises are facing as they adopt solutions like O365 and SaaS in general? Right, so you've got the quality of experience, quality of, of, of a service issue, right? Making sure that the um, remote user or remote office is hitting the right path on the internet to the right on-ramp is sort of one aspect of it, right? Right. So identify that it's O365, get me to the right on-ramp, have a nice, you know, seamless, quick um, experience. The other is from a security standpoint, understanding that you know, who the user is, what data are they accessing, what data are they sending around, is that uh, part of the normal behavior or is that something that looks a little strange and, and maybe we should would flag that. I mean, clearly you know, people do do a lot of sensitive things on Office 365. When you're out in the field talking with customers who have to transform digitally there's so many steps involved in that. We, you know, we talk about cultural transformation and security transformation, network transformation. How do you advise, especially like, we'll say, legacy organizations, maybe like a peer of Citrix's who's been around for decades, how do you advise them to start that network transformation process so that they can deliver, for example, you know, facilitate collaboration by O365 globally? What is that process? like to transform a network. Right, it, it's obviously very complex and, and, and very highly dependent on where you are and where you're starting, but there's no question that these organizations are not going to throw away the network that they have today. They've got switches and routers and Wi-Fi and application delivery controllers and all sorts of, of different things. So one of the reasons why SD-WAN has been successful is it's able to, to, to slide into the network relatively seamlessly as an overlay, so you don't have to rip and, rip and replace. And then gradually, as you bring up new sites or smaller locations or temporary sites, you may find that um, the actual router isn't as important over time. And then you can, you can start to evolve that to a more, um, simplified branch network operation. Instead of having five different boxes at a given branch, you can move to two or three, and then you know, ultimately I think we're going to a more unified um, SD branch type solution, but that might be a few years out still. So, and as we talk, you know, kind of the few years out, one of the great benefits productivity-wise from using the SaaS services uh, destroying the, the walls, so to speak, the perimeter, is that we can get sh frictionless transactions. The Citrix is you know, touting the employee experience. If I need to share a document with you, that shouldn't, there shouldn't be a, a ton of friction in that. But in that comes the, the scare of employees. Uh, the, we've been talking all week or both days about employees are the weak link in security. If I can't uh, trust my employee to not have their post-it note with the password on their, right. on, on their monitor, then all the security in the world can't, won't help. How is Citrix making security easier and frictionless so that one, we're ensuring Aldrin Mount, uh, Albright talked about we need to be able to trust who we're talking to. Right. So at the, at the beginning, we need to be able to trust <coughs> who we're talking to is actually who we intend to talk to. How has Citrix gone about enabling that? Right, so it goes back to you know, identity and endpoint management. So <clears throat> is that the device that we expect it to be? Is it the person we expect it to be? Are they doing the things that um, they normally do? Right, and then um, you know, the network can, can analyze well, is that a strange traffic? Is there, um, is there something being inserted? Is there malware? Is there a, an attack? So you, you have security can not only uh, can degrade the performance of the network, but it also can be used to um, take out data that you don't want to, to have, have leaving the premises as it were, so. Or even if the data hasn't been opened and peaked at. So, you know, right. if the SSL security keys that when it left the premises, the same as when it was received on the other end. Are those things still intact? Right. It's very complex, though. It's not a. Yeah, it's not we haven't solved the security <laughs> problem yet, but Citrix is certainly making some uh, good headway. I wanted to get your opinion. Speaking of Citrix and headway, as I mentioned, thirty-year-old company. Maybe they consider themselves thirty years young. Um, 
I noticed last year at Synergy 2018, rebranding, messaging changes, positioning. One of the first things David Henschel showed the audience yesterday in his keynote was a big, great eye chart that just showed how much they've been focused on delivering and they've delivered new solutions faster than they ever have before. Right. Um, we're hearing now about they've really elevated their technologies to not just be for power users, but for the general user, which right. is most of us. I'd love to get your, your perspective on not just the last year of Citrix's evolution, but over the last few years, and how you think they're, where they are now is a competitive advantage to their business. Right, so I focus mostly on the networking side of, of what Citrix is, is doing, and they've rebranded the networking, they've made some very significant enhancements, both in uh, SD-WAN and the ADC, and intelligent traffic management. And I think the next evolution for Citrix is really integrating these solutions together and uh, you know, moving even to, to easier to consume bundles. They, uh, what they've done in, the la like in this cycle of announcement is given a lot of different options in terms of ways to consume. You can consume it on the major cloud platforms, you can consume it as a box, you can consume it as a license or as a usage based. Over time, I'm interested to see how Citrix migrates to more network as a service offerings, which will make it even easier to consume. Um, and you know, as a workspace user, you, that, those tools might be in the background. You might not even know that they exist. And in some cases, um, that's already you know, here today, but there's a lot more that the industry and Citrix can do there. Do they have the foundation to eventually get to network as a service? Maybe the right ecosystem of partners to do that, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the, that's where they're headed, and I think they have some good technology and good partners, and obviously always more work to do, but. So as you talk to combined Citrix and your own customers, I'd like, like to get some insights. We, we've heard several times over the past couple of days, me and Lisa, that there's five generations of uh, workforce in the workforce, which also means there's five generations of leadership. So when I saw the stat in yesterday's show, when all of the changes that happened in a year at Citrix, one part of me was like, oh, that's great, that's the com consumerization of IT, enterprise IT. Right. Then another part of me was like, whoa, that's a lot of change. You know, if I set up a, if I spend a year and a half, two years deploying a network, I want that network to be there and stable for the next five to seven right. years. How have customers embraced the consumerization or the pace of change inside of Citrix and uh, in the industry as well? Sure, so I think the network issue is a little bit separate because it's not really a consumerization of the, of the network, right. right? And so that's still, you know, you still need network professionals and, um, that being said, you know, Citrix SD-WAN is, is very easy to ins install and um, you know, has good operational tools and, and you know, improved management. So you know, network management is now back in vogue and making, it, you know, making life easier for IT administrators. Um, you know, the whole consumerization, I mean, that, that's just like there's so many tools and so many channels and you know, the, the issue of being overwhelmed by the seven different ways that we might communicate with each other is a very real you know, challenge and I'm glad to see Citrix you know, addressing that because each generation or types of, will have their own favorite you know, ways, to, uh, ways to go about oh, it. Oh yes, even you can think about it you know, in your family, somebody might be an email person, somebody might be a text person, somebody might be a WhatsApp person. That's hard enough to manage to try to meet everybody. So somebody might be a phone person? I know, like real time, real time communication. Right, you know? creepy. But in terms of, you're saying, you know, that we talked about consumerization, not consumerization of, of the network, but those network experts that you talked about are influenced as <coughs> consumers at home, and we all as consumers have these expectations of everything on demand, I want to be able to use the tools that I'm most familiar with to become the most productive. So how are the network engineers and their own concern of consumerization potentially going to impact consumerization of the network? Right. I mean, I really look at the, you know, the two things of, of um, you know, is the network, is my application available? And is it uh, responsive, right? Obviously the first one's a, a deal breaker. The second one is incredibly frustrating. And then of course the third area um, from an IT or SecOps standpoint is, you know, is it secure, right? And then, 
you know, from an IT or network professional, I need to enable those things. So give me more tools. So I, mean, I think the, um, you know, the buzzwords of you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence as applied to networking are still a little early for that, but there are, um, you know, Citrix is using you know, its vast intelligence that it gathers through its traffic management system to, to look at you know, where, where to best route the traffic. Um, it's deploying new tools to make things easier to deploy and easier to troubleshoot. So anything that um, the industry and Citrix, Citrix can do there makes the life easier for the network guy and the IT guys, so. Making life easier, I think that's what we all want, right? Right. Well, Lee, thank you so much for coming back to theCUBE and talking with Keith and me at Citrix Synergy. We appreciate your time. Thanks. Our pleasure. For Keith Townsend, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Atlanta, Georgia, Citrix Synergy 2019. Thanks for watching.